Let's pick up where we left off in class, talking about standard deviations. Uh, here's the formula for standard deviations. Standard deviation, uh, the sample standard deviation formula I showed in class had an error in it. Uh, it should be n minus 1 in the denominator. I've updated that in these slides and uh, in the slides posted on Blackboard as well. You can also see the formulas to calculate the two. Uh, in general, as I mentioned in class, you're going to be using standard deviation for a sample most often. Uh, in this class, we'll probably use both of them though, so please keep an eye out. So why do we use n minus 1? It's not just to trick you. Uh, standard deviations that are drawn from samples, um, actually, we're not quite as certain as we should be uh, about the variability in our samples. We want to uh, add in a little bit of sort of uncertainty. So we'll inflate the standard deviation a little bit bigger, making it a little bit uh, larger than it would be if we just use n. Uh, so we want to be conservative in our estimates. So when deciding whether you should use a dot p or a dot s or a population or sample uh, in Excel, uh, figure out whether you have a population or a sample. So it depends on your situation, but samples are generally more common. Uh, the question to ask is do you have data on every one or everything that are you are interested in describing? If yes, you have a population. If no, you have a sample. So populations aren't always enormous. Uh, they can be very small. We could have a population that consists of everyone in the, uh, only everyone in uh, our section of HCV and PDH 300. Um, that's a population. But at the same time, that group, the group of uh, students in our class, is a sample of ASU students. So it doesn't, we don't necessarily distinguish between the two just by which is bigger. So we can calculate the standard deviation of the sample. So first we list all the scores. We compute the mean, as shown here. Uh, we subtract the mean from each score, and we sum all those up and we get zero, which again is why we have to square them before we sum them up. Here we square them, sum them up, excuse me, we square them, sum them up, and then uh, reach an answer of 28. And we can use 28 to complete the standard deviation formula and figure out that the standard deviation of that data set was 1.76. So uh, take a pause the video, take a second, and compute the standard deviation for the, for the sample shown here. Try doing it uh, sort of by hand in Excel as we did in the previous example. So you list them all, calculate the mean, uh, subtract that the mean from each of those numbers, uh, square that, then add it up, and then complete the formula. Um, so in Excel, there's actually an easier way to do it than all of that. Uh, we can see here we can get the same answer by typing in, you can see in the uh, formula line, equals stdev.s, and then we highlight the cells that we want. So in this case, we want cells B2 to B11. Uh, since it was a sample, we just calculated the sample standard deviation, but if this was a population, we would have used the population formula, and you can see here it would be a little bit less, which gets back to the slide a few slides ago, uh, that the sample standard deviation is always going to be a little bit bigger than the population standard deviation. There's another way that this can be done, calculating the sample, the standard deviation, it's through the analysis tool pack that I talked about. Um, I, again, please go through and uh, download the analysis tool pack using the slides, uh, the instructions on the slides that are posted on Blackboard. Um, we will troubleshoot if you weren't able to install it next week. If you aren't able to install it, please bring your computer with you and we'll try to do it in person. So again, you can select the data that you want, uh, select the cells that you'd like some descriptive statistics on, and as we talked about in the previous lecture, descriptive statistics can include things such as uh, the mean, median, mode, and uh, measures of variability. So here, this is what Excel gives you when you select descriptive statistics. We can see that the mean is 6, we have a mode of 8, and a standard deviation of 1.76, as we calculated previously. Uh, we can also see the range, the minimum, maximum, all those types of things. So stop here. Um, if you're still confused or have questions about standard deviation, um, I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to talk about it in class today, but um, go back through these slides, go back through the lecture. Uh, as I mentioned in a couple previous classes, YouTube is a great resource. Check out the YouTube playlist that's posted on our course Blackboard site. Um, and if, if that doesn't help, please get in touch with me and I'd be happy to go through this with you. Um, so just as a 
a recap here. Um, standard deviation, you should be able to answer all these questions. Standard deviation is, is uh, calculated by the distance from the mean. Um, the larger standard deviation, the larger the variability. The standard deviation is a standard deviation sensitive to extreme scores. Uh, if you don't know the answer to this question, let's try to figure it out together. Um, since the standard deviation uses an average and it subtracts the value of each observation from the average, yes, it is very sensitive to extreme scores. What does it mean if the standard deviation equals zero? Uh, it would mean that all of the points equal zero. So there's no variability in the data set. So moving on now to variance. Uh, variance is very closely related to the standard deviation. It also measures how far uh, a set of numbers is spread apart. And again, a variance of zero equals that all the va indicates that all the values are identical. Uh, as opposed to the standard deviation, uh, the variance doesn't take the square root of that, uh, the formula. So this formula should look familiar to you. Um, I hope we can remember what these symbols represent. Uh, in the formula above, we can see we use n minus 1, and it's for a sample. If we have a population, we would use n in the denominator instead. Uh, we have the same prefixes in Excel, so we have var.p and var.s, just like we had standard deviation.p and standard deviation.s. So if I'm asking you to calculate the variance for the following sample data, um, we have 12, 10, 12, 18, 5, 7, and 13. We can enter that into our uh, Excel spreadsheet. And we can see here that the formula to calculate that, since this is a sample of data, um, this is a different set of numbers, of course. It's the num set of numbers we were using previously. Uh, we can see that the variance here equals 3.11, which if you're sharp, you may recall from the uh, data analysis tool pack slide where we calculate descriptive statistics you may have seen that 3.11 number before. Again, we can also calculate a population variance, and we can see here that just like with standard deviation, the population variance is smaller than the population standard deviation. So just going back to why we have these two things, you can see here again the formula is very similar, uh, and I'm even calling this, I'm defining the variance as a standard deviation squared. So why do, I, why do we have this? Why don't we just use one or the other. Um, it goes back to the, the fact that we had to square these terms um, before we subtracted them. So with the x minus x bar, we had to square that. Uh, since we squared it, we're not on the original units anymore. So the difference, th that formula, if we're talking about, say, inches or um, dollars, we're not once we square it, we're not talking about inches anymore, we're talking about inches squared or dollars squared. So reporting variability in a dollars squared ma manner isn't always the most helpful thing. So the variance gets around that by, um, so the standard deviation gets around that by taking the square root. Um, if we don't want to do that, we can use the variance instead. So let's do some practice here. Um, after I'm done talking, uh, pause the video, and in Excel, put these numbers into Excel and try to calculate the mean, median, mode, range, standard deviation, and variance uh, for these levels of uh, fructosamine for a sample of patients. Uh, and please do that now. Okay, when you're done, I hope you've also viewed, I hope you've also calculated these um, numbers. If you haven't, please double check that you've entered in all the data correctly. Um, so I report here mean, median, mode, range, standard deviation P, standard deviation S, variance P, and variance S. Uh, which of these standard deviation and variances do we, should we use? The population or the, s or the sample? In this case, we should use the sample since in the prompt for this question it says these are, lev these are uh, fructosamine levels for a sample of patients. So the standard deviation that we should report for this case is 33.83, uh, and the variance we should report is 1,144.19. So let's just do a checkpoint here. Which of these data sets has greater variability? Which would you, what sort of uh, measures would you use to calculate this? I would suggest using all three and see what your answers get and see where they align and don't align. Sorry. Um, 
So now what affects standard deviation? Um, will the data spread or how spread out it, it will affect it? And will the sample size affect it? The answer to both of those questions is yes. Uh, the data spread will, because remember in the formula we subtract x minus x bar, or the average. So if you have data that are very spread out, they're probably going to be very far from the mean. Sample size will as well. So uh, going back to data spread, data is spread, if you have it very spread out, uh, you're going to have a higher numerator or a thing on the top of the fraction. And so your standard deviation is going to be bigger. Uh, with sample size, sample size it comes into the equation for standard deviation and variance as a numerator, which means the bigger the sample size, the bigger the numerator, excuse me, uh, the bigger n minus 1 is going to be, which means your, um, your denominator is going to be bigger and your uh, standard deviation will be smaller. Uh, so what does it mean if you have a small standard deviation? It means you have, uh, on average, uh, generally you have smaller um, uncertainty around your estimates. You're, you're more certain that um, there's going to be, a we'll, we'll get into exactly what that means um, moving on, but it means you generally have less variability in your data set. Um, so which one should you use, standard deviation or variance? Um, so the standard deviation is stated again in the original units, so dollars, inches, whatever. Variance is in inches squared or dollars squared. Uh, obviously, inches is easier to interpret than inches squared. Uh, but at the same time, um, variance is sometimes really helpful because it can um, it doesn't have the, the square root in as well. So as with measures of central tendency, the mean, median, mode, are three measures of variability, which is range, standard deviation, and variance, can really add a lot of information to our understanding about what our data look like. Um, so far, we've been using relatively small samples, so about 10 observations. But it gets really hard when we have observations of a million patients or a, a billion people to know what that looks like if we just say that the average is 7 or the average is 27. With variability measures, we can also say a little bit more about that data set. Are people all over the map or are they all clustered really close together? So but if we use both of these, so a measure of central tendency and a measure of variability, you can actually present a lot about the data. So if I told you the mean was 10 and the standard deviation was 2, you would know a lot more about that data set uh, than if I just told you one or the other of those. So before next class, uh, please load the analysis tool pack in Excel. There are instructions on how to do that in the uh, measures of central tendency PowerPoint that are posted on Blackboard. Please read chapter four and please complete homework assignment one. Thanks very much. See you next week.